At sunrise. It's one minute before five o'clock on this Tuesday morning, and here's a look at some of our Tuesday morning headlines. We start with the school bus full of kids in the Head Start program. It was part of a chain reaction crash near McMinnville, so this happened early last evening on Highway 18 near Durham Lane. Police say an SUV was trying to cross the highway when it hit a minivan. That minivan spun into the opposite lane of traffic and was hit by the school bus. None of the kids on the bus were hurt, but three of the people in that minivan were taken to the hospital with injuries. We have a consumer alert for you this morning as well. The packing company behind a lot of those Safeway Signature Farms veggie products is recalling a long list of their items. The company says those foods may have been contaminated by listeria. No one's gotten sick so far, but we do have a full list of those recalled food items for you to check out right now on our website. And the deadline to get your ballots in for this month's special election is today for both Oregon and Washington residents. In Oregon, it's too late to mail your ballot in at this point. You do have to drop it off at a ballot box by 8 p.m. tonight. But in Washington, you can still mail your ballot in. It will be counted as long as it's postmarked by today. Those are some of our Tuesday morning headlines. Now here's what's coming up on Sunrise. This was not an accident. This was a murder. And that was really important to her family that um, listeners and the public hear about that. Right now, you can download the Urge to Kill podcast about the murder of Oregon's Kaylee Sawyer and the crime spree that followed. Ashley Korslin has put in hours working on this, and she explains why her team is revisiting this case. I literally had to put my phone in a different room while I'm doing homework because I'm too, like, if my phone buzzes and I'll just be like, oh, what's that? And I'll look at it right away. I totally do the same thing. <laughs> and I am not one of those Guilty. teenagers. <laughs> Digital Detox Week is continuing here on Sunrise and we're bringing in the teens what they have to say about social media, their screen time, and when they got their very first phones. We will also have weather on the Sunrise Show. You know, we like to do that every morning. A little bit of weather, a little bit of Rod Hill. So, Rod, uh, we're going to talk about this very dry seven-day forecast you have. But first, yeah. we've got fog. Yeah, uh, actually, the weather has been canceled because we can't see it. <laughs> Here is the evidence. Dave Angier, our photojournalist, live on the 26 overpass up at the zoo. And Dave is looking down the hill back to the east. And look how foggy that is. And I want you to realize... Pretty much every single reporting site says, hey, we have dense fog with only a quarter of a mile of visibility. So this is very widespread this morning. As we come back to the visibility map, widespread enough, that's probably going to slow you down to some extent. Here's the quarter mile visibility. Now fog out in Troutdale, uh, Portland, along the Columbia River, Hillsboro, McMinnville, all a quarter of a mile of visibility. Again, everything shaded in white has some fog. Ast uh, Astoria and Salem also dense fog, quarter of a mile of visibility. So to the bus stop. Really foggy. Temperatures on average in the 30s out the door this morning. I think it's still overcast at noon, 45. And then gradually we'll start to see some clearing around the area and try desperately to get up into the 50s this afternoon. More on your forecast coming up shortly. All right. Rod again in about seven minutes. Thanks, Rod. We are going to get to our top story this morning right now, though. We've seen four accidents in the past 48 hours where a car hit a pedestrian, and that's probably not a coincidence that these have all happened since daylight saving time went away over the weekend. So we're going to get to that part of the story in a minute. But first, a few of the details on these two most recent accidents. Last night, a car hit a person on Southeast Division Street. Yeah, you see the accident scene right there. Police say that person was walking in an unmarked crosswalk. They were taken to the hospital with serious injuries, but they should be okay. The other accident happened over in Beaverton. A car hit someone there trying to cross 170th Avenue, and we're told the driver didn't see the person that was crossing the street. That driver did stay on the scene. Police say the person that was hit suffered critical injuries. There were also two fatal accidents involving pedestrians Sunday night. So one of those happened in Beaverton. The other was in Vancouver. And again, all four of these crashes we're talking about this morning have happened since daylight saving time went away this weekend. According to AAA, that is not a coincidence. AAA says there is a spike in car crashes whenever we set the clocks back. It happens each year at this time. So the sun is setting sooner right now. We know right around the time many people are driving home from work and that makes it difficult. It makes it challenging for drivers because our eyes have to adjust from daylight to darkness. Harvard researchers found that crashes do tend to be higher specifically on the Sunday night after we change the clocks back. So in light of all that, AAA has some tips for drivers. Number one, they suggest reducing your speed at night. Another suggestion is to put more distance between yourself and other cars around you. And of course, be sure that all of your lights on your car are working properly. 
Pedestrians also need to be more alert this time of the year. AAA reminds us that we should only cross streets in a marked crosswalk. We should avoid distractions like looking at our phones and we should wear bright colors whenever we're out walking in the dark. An update now for you this morning. We've learned the teenager killed while taking senior pictures on train tracks was a student in Estacada. The train hit him in Troutdale Saturday night. The school district provided grief counselors to students and staff yesterday. According to the district's Facebook page, the student's name was River Baker. The district wrote, River was a wonderful student, athlete and friend who will be missed by so many. Those who went to school with him had nothing but nice things to say. I always thought that he was nice. He cared for everyone. Like if you needed help and he saw that, he would help you. Like if you were feeling down and he like knew you, he would ask. He, he was a really nice person. Union Pacific says it can take a train up to a mile before it can stop. That's why it's pleading with parents, students and photographers not to take photos on or near the train tracks. Our next story can best be described as a costly spree of vandalism in southeast Portland, where a bunch of people woke up over the weekend to find that their car tires were flat. A home security camera captured several people slashing tires on southeast 49th Street near Hawthorne. Neighbors there say about a half dozen people in that neighborhood ended up with flat tires. Police say there may be more victims who haven't filed a report yet. So if you're one of those people, you should contact police. I mean, she she uh, took on the um, persona of being a tough business person, which was not easy for her since she didn't really know what a tough business person was. But she knew how to be tough and and. Um, you know, it, it made the rest of us um, get better. Stories and kind words about the late Gert Boyle continue to pour in. That includes who you just heard from there, her son, Columbia CEO and President Tim Boyle. He says when his father died, Gert found inner strength to take over the company and help it thrive rather. But that's not all she built. As Columbia went global and grew to be worth billions, Gert gave back. She donated $100 million to the Knight Cancer Institute at OHSU. Its director says her donation is one of the reasons they're closer to finding a cure for cancer. Some of the money went toward hiring about 750 people over the last five years. They're researchers who are now working on things like early cancer detection, better treatment options for advanced cancers, and drugs that help prolong someone's life when they're diagnosed with cancer. You know, speaking of the Knight Cancer Institute up at OHSU, it has another big donation to be happy about. This one comes from a Jeopardy champion. Yeah, this champion is the Catlin Gable grad who won the Jeopardy Teen Tournament back in June. So KGW's Catherine Cook caught up with him. He hopes that his giving will now inspire others to do the same. In a moment akin to Final Jeopardy, Avi Gupta took pen in hand and went for it. The winning question here, a $10,314 donation to OHSU's Knight Cancer Institute. And this is in honor of a Jeopardy host, Alex Trebek, a man who's been a role model for me for my whole life and someone who I had the fortune to work with uh, through my participation in the Jeopardy Teen Tournament. $100,000. This past June, the Catlin Gable grad won the Jeopardy Teen Tournament and the $100,000 grand prize. This check is part of his winnings. Surgery was performed. While Trebek battles pancreatic cancer, there are countless others fighting for their lives. Avi hopes his donation, a nod to the mathematical constant pi, will promote research for early detection. Everyone knows someone or has been affected by cancer in some way. And I believe firmly, after seeing the research that's underway here at OHSU and across the country and across the world, that our scientists are winning this battle against cancer. We just need to help them do more. What a remarkable young man and what a, what a great gesture. And we hope that inspires lots and lots more people. Dr. Brian Drucker is director of the Knight Cancer Institute. He and his wife were so inspired by Avi's donation, they pledged to match it. A true daily double. Drucker hopes others will donate whatever they can to make a difference. He thinks of the Night Cancer Challenge that raised $500 million through 10,000 individual donors. There were bake sales, lemonade stands. My daughter donated $16. 
Those are the people that inspire all of us to give small amounts and it all starts to add up. With each contribution, donors are encouraged to document their giving with the hashtag inspired by to recognize who they're donating in honor of. So I really hope that other young people, especially, will join me in supporting this cause. You know, we are the social media generation. You can count Dr. Drucker in. I'm going to hashtag inspired by and putting Avi Gupta because he is absolutely an inspiration. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Oh my gosh, that gives me hope. Those Absolutely. young people are amazing. Now, I read that uh, earlier this morning, that story. I'm like, $10,000 by this young man. He's got a future ahead of him. I'm sure he, he could does. use that money in many different ways, but he wanted to give back, so that was so cool to see. Yeah, nice story. I'm thinking of all the things I could do with $10,000. Again, I'm a horrible person. Yes, you are. Thank you very much. <laughs>